Now we're going to use another term, frequency. Now frequency goes hand in hand with a period. Because a frequency, the way to find it is you just take the reciprocal of the period. Basically, you just flip your previous answer. But what frequency tells you, especially when it reduces, it really works well, is how many cycles you could complete before you go one unit to the right or to the left for that matter. So not, we're not talking like necessarily 2 pi. 2 pi would be 2 times 3.14, which would be 6.28. So that would be way off to the right. We're talking about how many cycles could we complete before we go one unit to the right. So like a third of a pi. How many cycles could I complete? That's what frequency actually means. But to find it, it's very simple because all you do is you take the reciprocal, again, of your period. All you do is you flip the period. So on the previous example, if you remember, here we had that 16 pi was the period. What that means is the frequency, since 16 has no denominator, you'd put 16 pi over 1. The frequency would be one cycle for every 16 pi. Now that can't reduce, but that would tell you you wouldn't even complete a full cycle by the time you went one unit to the right. So that's how you do these. Let's try this one. It says a bass tuba can hit a note with a frequency of 50 cycles per second. Okay, so the frequency is 50 cycles. And I'm just going to put hertz. And the amplitude is 0.75. Write an equation for the cosine function that can be used to model the initial behavior of the sound wave associated with the note. Now, here's what we need to remember. A frequency you find by saying b, or the absolute value of b, divided by 2 pi. Now, since this value is positive, I don't need to worry about having those symbols right there. But that's how you'd find this. Now, if 50 equals b over 2 pi, let's solve this. Let's just write it out and solve it like we would normal algebra. b over... 2 pi. Well, how would I get b by itself? The first thing I would do is I would multiply both sides by 2 pi. When I do that, that goes away, and I get 100 pi equals my b. Now, you could simplify this and multiply it by 3.14, and we could get that b. You could also say that b is roughly 314. All right, that's how that would be our b value. So if I wanted to write the equation, including pi, what I would say is that y equals, remember, a comes first, 0 0.75. Uh, I believe they said a cosine function. So 0.5 cosine. And then here, if my b is 314, I put that in right there. You could put 314x. Or we could do it with a pi in there, saying 0 0.75 cosine of 100 pi x. Either way, we can write the answer. This is more exact because it's not been rounded. I rounded pi up here to 3.14 before I multiplied by 100. So I'll circle this one, the unrounded answer. So you go through and see if you can figure out this one. Again, they left their answers in unrounded form.